Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, fellow parishioners. My name is Greg McIntosh, and I would like to welcome you to the second part of a three-part communication series being held in our parish, the goal of which is to provide you with the best available information in three key areas as we look forward to the formal establishment of Holy Trinity Parish. There will be three presentations in the series. The first presentation was last Friday. Our presenter was Colleen Owen, chair of our pastoral council. She gave a presentation regarding the pastoral plan for Holy Trinity Parish. That presentation is available on the Holy Trinity Parish YouTube channel. Tonight's presentation will be by the chair of our financial council, David Nicholson, which will update you on the financial state of Holy Trinity Pastoral Unit as we transition into being Holy Trinity Parish. One week from tonight, on November 15, Catherine Kidson, our director of operations at the parish and a member of our senior leadership team, will do a presentation based on a preliminary survey of our buildings and the infrastructure contained therein. We appreciate that this is a very important topic for many of you. However, we must also remind you that this is a preliminary survey only and work remains to be done before any decisions can be made with respect to our buildings. This work will continue into the new year. We will do our best to provide further information as we move through that process. Both the presentation and the question and answer session that follows will be recorded and will be available via internet to those who may be unable to be with us tonight, as well as those who would like to go back and review some of the information again. Since we are recording this evening's proceedings, when the Q&A begins, I will move throughout the church with a microphone so that the questions can be recorded along with David's responses. The parameters for tonight are very simple. Please listen carefully to David's presentation, which will last for about 30 to 40 minutes, following which there will be a period of time, approximately 20 minutes for questions and answer portion of the program. I will come to those people who wish to pose questions with a microphone so that I all may hear the question and both the question and the answer will be recorded. We understand that this is a challenging time in our community. I'm sure that we can rely on each of you to pose and answer questions in a respectful manner, which is mindful of our common mission as brothers and sisters to build up the body of Christ, which is his church. As we begin, I ask you to join me in prayer for the successful union of this parish community. We will use the prayer given to us by our spiritual leader, Archbishop Mancini, in the context of the ongoing reorganization of our parish structures, which calls us to become new parishes, stronger together. Heavenly Father, please pray with me. Is it up there now? Apparently not. Okay, I'll just, I'll just lead, I suppose. <laughs> okay, I'll offer the prayer on behalf of everyone. Heavenly Father, in this time of transition, sustain our efforts to become better equipped for the new evangelization. Give us the courage and insight to take on the task of purification and renewal for a more credible church. Grant us the knowledge and understanding to respond to the call of pastoral conversion and the demands for a more missionary expression of Christian discipleship in our time. May your Holy Spirit release in us the gift of wisdom necessary to make of our new parishes centers of evangelical outreach and united communities of communities, welcoming centers of prayer and learning, ministry and worship and environments of healing, reconciliation, and care for the poor. 
provide for us clergy and laity skilled in leadership to provide this, to guide this transformative journey of faith. We ask all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So now I would like to call upon David Nicholson, Chair of our Financial Council, to share some important information with you. I'm sure you will give David your kind attention. Thank you, Greg. Can everybody hear me with this thing? So, Friday night, it's raining. What a better way for you to spend the night to listen to an accountant. <clears throat> I can think of better things to do, but anyway. Um, so, uh, we're going to spend some time here going over what's going on with finances, what some of the things that we're doing differently, uh, and uh, just really give you a chance to uh, get some questions at the tail end. Uh, I may not have all the answers for everything, but if we don't, we can take note of it and get the answers for you. I'm not going to be able to give you details of what makes up some of the numbers because I didn't bring my big binder with me. Uh, but uh, we can definitely get you the answers as we sort of roll through. Um, as again, I want to—I thought jumping those lights are bright. I want to—I want to—I uh, want to take a minute, I guess, and get everybody on the same page. Everybody's coming here with different backgrounds. Uh, probably different th thinking about what, what's going on and where we're at as a parish. So just to put it, it okay, this is going to go. Just to put it in perspective, I just think everybody needs to get started at the right point. And if you just take a minute, you know, we talk about a net loss, but in these guys' case, it's not an, it's, it's, they lost the Wi-Fi, so they lost the net, right? Just get everybody sort of going. But in, I really want to get going on this, uh, on, uh, uh, sort of the uh, where I'm coming from here. I joined the parish in 1988, <clears throat> so I'm uh, I joined very very young. Uh, I mean, you know, I was what about 10 probably then? Because I'm not that old now. But anyway, but uh, seriously though, my wife and I moved to Lower Sackville in 1988, and uh, we became part of the St. John Vianney Parish at the time. Father Owen Conley was here. And when he found out I was an accountant, uh, he very quickly uh, enlisted my help on finance. So I was the chair of the finance for a number of years. And interestingly enough, uh, when I left that position, uh, Tom came on board as the chair of the finance committee, and he was there for 18 years. And when he stepped down, Father Ken asked me to be the chair again. So. It's been a very tight group over the years of chairs of the finance here. So, uh, but interestingly enough, in that 18 years, a lot of things have changed with our parish. You know, we, you know, back when I was on it before, it was just this location. Now we've got three, and uh, you know that cr brings some challenges with it. Finances is just one of the many things. You heard Colleen talk about some things last week that we're trying to do with parish council, and uh, but it all ties together because everything. You know, as, as sad as it is, so much of the world it runs on money. It's, it's, the, it's the currency of exchange here, and uh, that's really what I want to talk to you a little bit about here. So, as we all know, there's things going on. The archdiocese are making some changes and implementing new policies and systems, and one of the things that they've made uh, imperative is that, as a finan that, that every parish needs to have a finance committee. And this is the mandate of the finance committee right from the archdiocese, and it's really the purpose of the finance committee is to assist the pastor and support him in administration and planning of the business and financial affairs of the parish in accordance with canon law. It sounds pretty straightforward, but that enlists, that it entails a lot of different aspects. It's really the temporal component of our business, or our, of our parish. I apologize for, I'll probably use business throughout the thing and it's just a slip because that's the world I, I work in during the day. But, the end of the day is this is what we are we have a whole bunch of aspects it's budgeting it's you know fundraising it's it's just basically where we spend our money and where we get our money so that's some of the stuff I'm going to talk to you a little bit about here tonight um, and uh, hopefully uh, I'll make accountants out of you all uh, <clears throat> but anyway the finance council members as they sit today is myself we have Stephen McDonald Cecilia McClellan, Brian Parsons, Christine Spears, and Simon Gomez. So we have a good, strong council, and uh, you know we've got a lot of things going on. Uh, we meet every month, and uh, the uh, you know 
it's a great group who are really focused on trying to help the parish grow and we want to accomplish all those objectives that the parish council that Colleen uh, shared with everybody a week ago. So we're pretty excited about it. Uh, so but with this finance council, we've got some, you know, some of the stuff that's new, some of it isn't, but the reality of it is, is, you know, change is a good thing. The only constant in the world is change, right? And we have a member, one of the things, like, we're not going to have another, uh, you know, I won't be here for 18 years like Tom, because we've, we're implementing an appointment structure where we have a three-year term, and they're appointed by our pastor. We want, just do not want numbers people. We do not want all accountants on finance and, and that's what we're trying to get a mix of different skill sets. We've got some engineers, we've got business people, we've got myself who has been an accountant for more years than I care to remember. Uh, we've got all that stuff going on and, and, and then we're, you're, we want to, we've got some people who have uh, fundraising backgrounds and relationship building backgrounds so because all of those areas is, are skill sets that the, the finance council and the parish needs. So we've, we've starting to diversify because back years ago when I was here, it was all just bookkeepers, accountants, financial type people on the finance council and I think that there's a big gap there. We're implementing a, a very detailed budgeting system and it's important that the people who are going to have to live with a budget are part of the process. As a finance uh, council, I can't, or the council can't mandate, here's our budget, go away and spend. Because we don't know what they need. These, and, we, and, if, and if you're not part of the process, you're not going to have as good a buy-in on it. So what we've done is we've made the staff start at the ground and bring the budget up to us, and then we'll review it and, and uh, edit, change, adjust, whatever it is, and but we need to understand what do the staff need so that they can undertake to accomplish the missions that have been laid out in our parish plan. And that's really what we're talking about with that. Uh, we're in the process now of getting it the final touches on it to send it off to the Archdiocese for approval. We are now operating with one bank account as we've been for, I guess, probably since last year. Uh, and that's been mandated again. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of choice in that. The Archdiocese is telling us that. As of January the 1st this year, we are now one, uh, filing under one charity. Prior to that, each of the various uh, locations had to file their own charity return. So that, is, again, is being mandated, and CRA have been notified. And, and, and so this year, at the end of December, when we file, we will be filing one. We're looking at strategically big-picture stuff. We've got a lot of things that we have to look at. Uh, you know, basically every aspect of the parish needs attention. And that's, you know, that falls within our area. We have one of our members sits on finance, but also sits on parish council, because the parish council and finance have to work together, because, you know, they're, they're driving initiatives, we're driving the dollars. We need to, there needs to be some back and forth and understanding what is going on, and so that we are prepared to to say, hold on, we can't afford that, or go forth, we've got lots of money. Uh, and we're also developing roles and responsibilities for the members. As I said before, we've got a bunch of diverse skill sets on council now, and we're hoping to add more to that. But with that, we want to have some various, for the sake of a better word, subcommittees of the Finance Committee to take on projects to help staff, but also to help grow our parish. So we're early stages of that, we had a strategic uh, meeting, off-site meeting on, for all day Saturday of the Finance Committee, really looking at, at that kind of stuff and figuring out, you know, what should we be focusing on and, and, and we're, you know, we probably have to do another one because I think we ran out of time. I remember when Father Brian, I didn't tell him this, but I remember when he first said we, sh we need to do one in my mind, I'm driving home and I'm saying, what are we going to spend a day about talking about finances? my world, I'm all about selling time, that's efficiency, and I'm saying, this is going to be a waste. That was my first thought, but I'll tell you, it was one of the most valuable experiences that we did as a finance committee. Uh, so those are just a few of the things that's going on. Uh, I could probably talk for quite a while on the things, but you all see, anybody that was here on last Friday seen this from Colleen, it's really the critical success factors of Parish Council. 
We want unification of communities. We want personal, uh, personnel needs. We have to deal with communication plan. Finances is one of her critical, her five critical uh, success uh, factors. And then norms and structures. So finances is important. And within the parish, I think I broke this thing. Within the parish uh, council critical success factors, this is sort of the things that they've identified that they need help with with finance. We need to increase a culture of giving. We need to focus funds on mission-oriented goals and developing leaders. We need allocation of financial resources to hire staff to support the missions. And we have to address the lack of funds for deferred maintenance and repairs of the three buildings. You're going to hear Catherine talk about that a week from today, uh, about where we're at with our, with our facilities. Uh, be a good meeting to come to because I think it'll put, bring, bring a lot of all the stuff that we're talking about together. Um, so I encourage you to get out to that. But these are the things that the Parish Council have identified are important, and that really flows from what we talked about, or flow, flows into what we talked about at our, uh, at our off-site meeting. And these are the kinds of things that we're talking about at our finance committees every month. So I'm excited for where it's going, and uh, I'm not as excited about this slide. So one of the things that... <clears throat> One of the things that we always obviously have to do is we have to see where we're at and, and have a sort of a yardstick of, of, uh, of uh, our results. Now, can everybody see those numbers? Well, then I don't have to go over them. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Do I do that, Steve, with this thing? Well, let me summarize it for you. Sunday collections, the top line. To the end of, this is nine months end of September. We have $304,000. Last year at the same time period, we, were, we had 337,000. So we're down 30, almost $39,000 or 11.5%, nine months into the year as compared to last year. Christmas and Easter seals are basically where they were in the past. Initial offering is down about $874 at 1590 Parish development is down $2,600, so it's down 17%. Family ministry is down $5,000, or 45%. Room and board, that is the uh, money that uh, the, the companions pay to us because they stay up in the, in the, in the residence. And then other revenue like donations, stole fees, candles, whatever little bit of fundraising we have that's not earmarked for capital is into that last number. It's at 30,000. Last year at this point we were 51,000. So altogether, total revenue or cash receipts that we have available to pay all of our operating costs are at down $70,596 or 15.6% year over year, nine months in. Now, when you look at that, we've got, what, remember October, three more months to the end of the year. There is probably nothing going to happen in those three months that would tell us or would give me comfort to say that that's going to change. If anything, it'll be a bigger number. <clears throat> now, I haven't heard a lot of tutting yet, but I'm just telling you, I was like, be patient. <laughs> so, we're, what happened? There we go, expenditures. So I give Father Brian and the staff here a lot of credit because even though our revenue is down $70,000, they've only increased expenses by 6900 So that's a good thing. And the, re the, th the thing of it is, is at a point in time, you can't reduce your... I'm going past the X. I just realized that. Uh, sorry, that's so that I can be on the video camera, I guess. Uh, so what we have here is we have $450,000 of operating costs to run the parish. Last year it was 443. We have family ministry. They've been able to, you know, it's $4,900 down. That's a good thing. Unless it's, it's a good thing as long as it's not impacting the service. 
and what the par parishioners are looking for. So you get to a point, if you cut the expenses too much, then you're not, you're not providing the, uh, the, I'll call it service, the, what it is the parish is looking for, the parishioners are looking for. And then if they're not getting what they're looking for here, then they'll go somewhere else, and then all of a sudden the revenue goes down again, and it becomes a spiraling circle. You're sort of circling the drain at some point. So I guess the message I'm trying to deliver here is we can't cut any more expenses to make up for the 70000 That This is as lean as I think we can get it. We have uh, music is up a little bit. We got liturgical $6,900 compared to ninety-seven last year, which is good. Staff salaries are up a little bit, about $8,000 year over year. That has some severances and things in there that are sort of one-time expenses this year that uh, won't be there in the, pa in the future. Maintenance and supplies, that's our building maintenance. You're looking at about 40000 compared to thirty-eight five last year. The diocesan assessment, 63000 to 57, not much we can do about that. They're pretty, that's pretty much fixed. Our church expenses, which includes things like utilities, the office supply, office uh, expense, uh, property taxes, insurance, all those kinds of things are at 84,000. Last year they were 85, so pretty much on par. You can't, a lot of those expenses are pretty fixed. You gotta have oil to heat the place, you gotta have power, you gotta, can't tell the city, you know, there's all this, you gotta have the insurance, it's all stuff like that. Parish House is up a little bit, $6,800. They have more residents start going to be coming in there, so that you know that's that's a, that's going to be hopefully be recovered on the other end. Faith and formation is down about 36. That's the math is wrong on that. It's down. What's that? One about seven thousand. So, all, but 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 the interesting thing here with all of that. We are in the hole, or we have an operating deficit for the first nine months of this year of $62,784. Last year at this point, we had a surplus of $8,115. So we're basically $77,000 worse off this year than we were last year at this point. That's a bit of a problem. Because so much of our revenue, as you've seen, is really driven by Sunday collections. That's our big, that's our big one and they're slipping. And when you go down and you look at this, this is our ordinary revenue, our, basic, our Sunday collections. You've got, in 2017, you had total of 506, right? 2018, you had 444. You had to September 316. This also includes, if you remember, we ha that includes some of the parish development and some of those other ones adds up to get you to the to the two six the three sixteen, um, and if you extrapolate that out to the end of December, assuming that we follow the same trends, we're looking at probably being at four hundred and twelve thousand. So you probably can see a trend there. The average weekly collections in two thousand and seventeen from all parishes or all locations within the parish was ninety seven hundred and thirty four dollars. This uh, 2018 was 8,509. To the end of September, it was 8,119, and probably around 8,000 at the end of the year. Now, that's a problem, and if it keeps sliding, it becomes a real problem. People on par now. The reason there's nothing in 2017 and 2018 is I wasn't able to get the detail, of the data as to what those numbers were. But as of September, we had 88 people on par here in 2019. Now, does everybody know what par is? Pre-authorized remittances. And somewhere in here, I thought I had a form. It's this form here. We, they're out there tonight. I encourage everybody to grab one, take one home with you because, you know, for Marlene and I, inevitably what happens with us is we're halfway to church and we live in Bedford before and we forgot our envelope. So then you're catching it up the next week and, and, and it's just, you know, so that means there's a week of money that they're not getting, not that, you know, if we don't make a, a donation a week doesn't mean we're going to close the doors, but it all adds up. It all adds up, right? It's not, a, it's not the big amounts, it's a consistently 
the little amounts consistently applied or contributed over a, over a time frame is what makes a difference. But then, but if you look at 2018, the average number of envelopes per week, last, in 2018, we had 264 envelopes. The average weekly envelope amount or donation in the envelope was $22.37. When you look at <clears throat> 2019 to the end of September, we had 248 envelopes. Okay, well, some of the people who were in envelopes have switched to par. Great. However, when you do the average, based on the envelopes you've got and the, and the money coming in in envelopes, we're down to $17.54. So what does that tell you? It tells you that people are giving less. So that basically supports all the stuff above it. So I just, this is just information for you guys to take away. Uh, but when you really, you know, when you really look at, the other thing that I, I want to mention just before I forget, uh, which I wasn't aware of until we had our last finance uh, meeting and Melissa from the Archdiocese was telling us that if it costs us more as a church for, pe for us to deposit monies that come in in envelopes than it does if we contribute through par, the banking fees are more expensive for us depositing checks and cash through the envelopes that people give than if someone put, goes on par and they electronically pull it out of your bank account. So it's, again, little bits, little bits of savings and costs. So <clears throat> some people don't like numbers, so I drew them a picture. Our ordinary revenue, 2017, You'll see, 506, just look at the graphs, they're going the wrong direction. 2018, 442, 2019, 412. This is a, you know, this is a trend that we're, we're seeing and it'll be, you'll really get a, a better, remember this, remember this, these slides, remember this conversation next, a week from now when you're sitting here listen, listening to Catherine because it'll really hit you, really hit home as to why this is important. And then their average weekly collections, it's just again the same numbers, just in a different format. So I think, I think that's my last slide. Yeah. A couple of things I wanted to share with you. So as of today, well I guess yesterday when I called, we have $124,000 in the bank. Last year we had, at this point in time, we had over 200. Because that $70,000 that we're down as we've had to use cash reserves that we've had set aside. And that's not the reserves that are sitting down there. In addition to that $124,000, we have reserves at the Archdiocese of about 80987 20000 of that is St. Francis's, and 60000 of it is uh, St. Elizabeth Seton. But that's not operating revenue or operating money. The money that we have in our current account that we use to pay the bills as of yesterday is $124,000. I don't want to paint a really bad picture here, but that's concerning because if you think about where we're, what's going here, you know, think about this in your household. If you have, you, you know, if, you, if it's costing you this much and you don't, you're not having enough coming in, it's coming out of your savings, and that's what's happening. So I've just, I just encourage people to sort of take this away, think about it. But importantly, remember it when Catherine's talking to you next week because uh, there's a lot of stuff that we have to deal with here as a parish. Some of the things that the Finance Committee is doing to try and figure it, because one of the things that we've got to do is we've got to think outside the box of the way we've done things in the past. We've got to do some stuff differently. And it again comes to change. Maybe we need to look at putting together some sort of a system where we, help, we encourage people to give some legacy giving on from their estates on death. I don't know. I don't know if that's been done in the past. But you know what? I sit on the board of Autism Nova Scotia and they have a very strong program in that and they get on average a million dollars a year. Now I'm not saying we're going to make a million dollars, but you know what? 100,000 go a long way sometime. It's all, you know, I think we just have to start thinking differently about where our revenue is coming and how we encourage. We need to, we need to really, one of the things that I notice in, 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 the, in the parish here is we come in, you, you sit, in, you sit in, in at Mass, and I, I, there's people that I see in here and they're, every, they're here every week.
but they don't put an envelope in. They put like 10 bucks or 20 bucks cash. At some point, I felt like saying, if you don't want the receipt, put it in my envelope and I'll get the receipt and get the tax deduction. <laughs> but seriously, why wouldn't you get an envelope? And I mean, that adds up. You know, $10 a week, that's $520. That's, that's a couple hundred dollars refund on your tax return. I don't know about you, but an extra couple hundred bucks from the man is a pretty good thing, <laughs> right? So just this kind of stuff, right? And, and that's the same with the par. We need to encourage that because the, the par enables us to have consistent giving. How many of us go away in the summer and then our envelopes sit empty in, on, our, on, our, on our counters? That's sort of what we have to think about. But the par, they're going to go on a regular basis. And, you know, for Marilyn and I, we're on PEI a lot in the summer. So we'll go to churches over there. And we'll be the ones throwing the ten, twenty dollars in the collection plate, but then our envelopes aren't being put in here because we're not here. Par doesn't, par fixes that, right? So 